So let's get an in-tablet view of Orphanino. Um, if you can see, uh, Orphanino provides you with essentially a palette of notes. Um, and there's several different palettes. There's uh, what they call a bass thumb palette, which is just a series of low notes in uh, triads. There's the mini blues, so you can, uh, a bit of a blues scale there. Um, what they call calm, which is just the first five notes of a scale. Pentatonics. Um, a harmonic minor scale. Now it's not always clear how these are um, laid out in the palette, so it's not necessarily a line. Um, so sometimes you kind of have to pay attention. And you see how it skips back and forth. It's not always the most intuitive um, interface. Lydian mode, um, just an upright piano. Um, chromatic scale within an octave. Um, a series of thirds. Which is neat if you wanted to score a little uh, science fiction film. <laughs> um, a Holto palette, which is actually a lot of fun. Um, and I think that's as far as it goes. Um, now, if you don't like the notes that are being played, as you can see, each circle identifies the note and the, uh, I think it's the American Acoustical Society's octave designations. Um, you can actually, at the bottom there, hit the sharp or flat. And that's just an indication that's going to raise or lower it by semitone. It, by default, always keeps sharps showing. Um, so no matter how far you go, and you can go all the way down to the bottom to the bottom of piano, the A0. In fact, it'll go even below the A0. It'll go down to a, a C0, which is ridiculous, and it, it's barely audible. And certainly isn't audible through an iPad. It's only audible because I have my headphones in. And of course, uh, the sharp would raise it by a semitone. What I like about this is it provides the opportunity to really explore a lot of um, a lot of musical ideas with your students. So for one of the things that you can do right away is talk about how you articulate a note. Let's not do bass. Let's do let's do this pentatonic wheel. So depending on how you place your fingers on the pads, you get different effects. So you can get a staccato, like a plucked effect. Um, or if you put essentially more of your finger on it, um, you get a kind of a different, more of a, a drippy effect. And if you actually flatten your finger out and kind of slap it, you get more of like a drummed, a pitched drum effect. Um, now what's, what's nice about this is that if a student is, you know, creating a melody with this, he can practice using different articulations. So. Um, so not only are they thinking about the notes they're putting in the melody, but they're thinking about the way to phrase that or the way um, the way to articulate that melody. You can also sweep between between notes, which is kind of uh, interesting. Now, one thing I find a tiny bit disappointing is that you can't set up these pit pitch palettes yourself. So if, say you want an octatonic pitch palette or something like that, you really can't create that. The pitch palettes you're provided with are kind of the only options that you have, but it does do um, some other interesting things. Um, so for instance, if I hit this C um, in the middle, it just plays C4, middle C. But if I uh, move to the outer edges of this C, it'll bend the pitch up and you can specify how much. In my case, I have it bending on, up almost a semitone. Um, and you can see, of course, the danger is if you move too far, you might accidentally, um, you might accidentally activate another uh, pad. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't let you bend down. All the bend is in one direction. So even if I go, even if I move my finger down, it still bends the pitch up. Another interesting um, characteristic is if you go side to side, it creates a tremolo effect. So again, it's it's a it's another. Um, 
another aspect that a student can add into their palette. So really, it's, it's quite a flexible tool. It gives you uh, a lot of things to play with, um, and it can be used to teach a lot of different musical concepts, um, all within one package and all for free. So I highly suggest this. Um, one last thing is you can save and record your melodies. So I could go here and I could turn on Start Recording. Um, and then I could email it to myself, I could send it to SoundCloud, I could delete it. Um, it is also possible to get MIDI output um, from this app if you have the correct setup. So it's quite flexible and it's free and or finino. I suggest getting it while it's still free. 